Alrighty, carving's all done. We might be uh, cleaning a tag here and there, but you know that just goes with the, goes with the process. So anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to do some burning and some sanding and some uh, just some excel, exclamation ex Can't even think of the damn word. Explanations. Exclamations. Explanations of some things. Okay? So first, let me take his head off here. One thing you might want to do is enlarge your hole. I know this is look this looks terrible, but none of that's going to be seen as my hat disappears. That's going to be filled with glue or epoxy where this uh, post goes. When you're putting the crown on on to the brim, onto the head, nothing really matches up exactly. So you have to give yourself some slop. So, you know, enlarging that hole lets me do that. And again, it's not going to show, it's going to be filled. So that's just part of the process, okay? All right, that's explained. Okay, now. I said earlier, I'm going to show you uh, how to make the sunglasses like these here. Well, I've already done that. If you go, I think it's on YouTube, I'm going to make sure. On my old blog, there's a, I think it's a five part series on how to make these sunglasses. So uh, there's really no reason to uh, do five more videos. To do the same thing that's already been done there. So you can go there. Let's go, I think it's back up the other direction. Yep. Yep, five parts. Part five, four, three, two, one. You can go there if and uh, to get there, the quickest way is to go over here and they call it labels over here. Some places call them tags, but on this side it's called labels. And just go down here and look for sunglasses. Okay? And just touch that. Well, first of all, let's go someplace else. Let's go, 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 go. Okay, now let's do it again. Just scroll down to sunglasses right there. Touch it. <laughs> and bingo, there they all are. My little internet's kind of slow down here. Anyway, they're all there. They were there just a minute ago. Turn, turn that off and I'll come in quicker. Okay, so there's five of them. Shows you how to do it. And then I'll show you how to put them on the head once we get to that stage, okay? Alrighty. Turn this off. So we've covered that. Another thing is someone said, are you going to show us how to cut the top of a guy's head off? Yes, I am. I'm going to do that right now. Take your cigarette out. And we're going to go over to the bandsaw. But first, before we go over there, we have to decide how, at what angle we're going to cut his head off. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Now, if we cut it straight across like that, it's it's not going to look good. It's just not going to look good. Let's see here. I don't have a hat, but I've got a brim. If you cut it straight across, I mean, you can cut it straight across if you want, but it's not going to look good, as good, as if you cut it at an angle. I always cut it at an angle if I can. So, we want to cut it in an angle to where it's going to come just above his ears. Alright? Because remember, you're going to indent the bottom of the hat so the carving is going to go up into the brim 
a little bit. Okay? So let's go over to the bandsaw and we'll do this. Okay, over here at the bandsaw. Now, holding the head, you know, at the angle that you want to cut, take a look down at his other ear to make sure it's going to clear. And it is. So we're ready to go. Get a, when I turn the bandsaw on, you want to get a firm grasp of your carving so it's not going to, the blade's not going to jerk it out of your hand. Okay? And then uh, just run her through there as straight as you can. Off oh, with his head. Okay. Now if you look at that, we've got a slight angle. Now we can correct that, but a lot of times you don't want to. Sometimes, you know, pe people don't wear their hats straight, especially a cocky cowboy. He's going to cock up, he's going to, you know, put it on and it's going to have sort of a cocky slope to it. And uh, just makes him look that much better. All right, the top here, it's not going to be perfectly flat. That's pretty flat there. So what you might want to do is come around here to the sanding wheel if you have one. If you don't, don't worry about it. Let me turn it around here. Just turn it on. perfectly flat, okay? If that's what you want to do. But again, you don't really have to do that. You can actually leave it rough and in a way, you know, this this piece, if it was like that here, this piece, because of the grooves from the saw going through it, actually gives you a better surface to glue on than sanding it flat. But just remember, when you're running it through that bandsaw, because this is rounded, it's almost like a dial, if you don't have a firm grip on this piece, it's going to jerk it out of your hand, and that's dangerous. Okay? You can carve it away if you want, if you don't feel safe. But anyway, we've reached that point. Now we'll go back over to the carving stuff. Well, there he is. There's the old guy wearing his hat. Well, he actually doesn't look too bad. That He's definitely got a 10-gallon hat on, that's for sure. But anyway, with the head cut now, uh, there it looks a lot better there. You just go through the same process as we did with that hat there. We pretty well reached the same stage as uh, we picked this hat up. Okay, so that's how you do that. So I'll put my dowel back in here. back together and there he is it's looking cool okay so now let's do some burning Get my phone out of the way here I use a little uh, I think this is a coal wood detailer yep pretty sure it is yep bought it off a guy years ago I've been using it. I find it seems a little better than a detail master, which I used to have. Plus you can use use any kind of pen that you want. And for mine, burning, I use this kind of tip right there. Just a small chisel tip. Like that. Works out perfectly. cigarette because I'm always losing cigarettes back there so we we'll turn that on and I'll just use this as to detail it okay get my uh, tangles out of my wire
Okay. Just be gentle. Don't go overboard. Don't sit there and burn the heck out of your piece. You just want a light line. Just like that. Critical thing is around the eyes, I just real lightly just highlight the deepest areas. Gotta turn my tool down there a little. These tools are really hard to... I'm not a bird carver, so I'm not a... show you doing the whole thing here because we got to move along so I'm just going to give you enough to where you get the idea You don't really need to burn all the line all the way down because you're going to paint it. You just want to, I can't think of the word, you just want to do enough. Don't do more than enough. And it's you who have to decide what enough is. That's part of learning how to do it. And if you overdo it, You can come back with your knife and scrape that off. But you really don't even have to do that because you're going to paint over these areas, as you'll see, and your paint will cover up those burn lines. Okay? So, that's on the head. You can see on this one exactly what I've done here. Okay. I've seen some guys who've burnt their carvings and well, they really burnt their carving. It just uh, didn't look didn't look good. On uh, the body, we want to burn a line on any color separation. Like the neckerchief is going to be one color different than the vest different than the vest uh, hem here, different than the button, different than the pocket, and different from the shirt. So we want to divide these areas up when we're burning. Turn that back on. So, and as you're burning, see all these little, little bitty pieces down in there, you know, as you're burning, you'll burn those things up. So it all, the burning part actually cleans your carving up.
clock's just ticking away back there. Still a little fast. I have to work on that, but she's getting there. It's about as exciting as watching paint dry, I guess. And I'm the one burning. I can imagine what it's like watching me do this. I just want to give you the complete picture. Things like that happen. You can take your knife and just cut it away. Go back and do it again. saying, boy, that guy sure can't burn worth a dime. I'll probably hear from some bird carver. Now the line around the clock, that's just an impression. I'm not going to burn a line there. I'll paint a, a relief on that. On the buttons, I put a little mark there, on there, on there, on there. And then I'll just turn my flame down a bit and just go around them. These areas up here, because the crease goes in, just kind of bleed to bleed it out. That's all you need. sitting there shaking that camera. I can imagine it's hard to hold him. 
Okay, so you can see where I'm going. And the most important thing is to sign your name on the back. I'm not going to show you how that. But uh, after I get it all burnt, what I like to do, I like to come in to about right there and burn a line around the whole carving and carry my colors over to that area. It just ends it and keeps your colors from bleeding into this larger area back here. And it looks good. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do this, do the rest of these things. On the hat, I'll just burn around the top of the hat band here. Just like that and kind of accentuate the break there. Like that, okay? That's all the hat needs. Okay, now after you get that done, what, what's next? Sanding. And uh, being as uh, uh, I have completely burnt this, I'll just demonstrate sanding on the hat, okay? Because it's ready to go. Except for, well, it's ready to go. All right. Take that out because you'll always bust that off while you're sanding. Okay, so we'll go over to the sander. Okay, I'm over here at my flap sander. Now, this is my flap sander. Okay, this is an old version. It's metal. There's another one down there. It's metal, too. It's an even older version. The newer versions, the wheels are made out of plastic. That's just the way things are. But the sandpaper is, is the same. Now, this is the best place to go find it. AAA abrasives, actually, AA abrasives got done. And uh, you can ask for a new catalog. But what you want to do is you want to, once you get there, just type in Sando Flex. It's Three little words, sand, o, flex, and search for that. And uh, come on, my phone, stop doing that. Anyway, oh damn this thing! There, now it did what I wanted it to do. You have to scroll down through there, and you want to buy the finest grit wheels and by grit that's the number right there see there's 180 grit 80 grit 100 grit 60 grit 120 grit 180 grit 60 grit 80 grit there's there's just all kinds of different grits what you want to buy or what I suggest you want to buy you want to get the 320 grit uh, replacement. And that's this right here. It's made by Merritt Industries. They're the one who has the patent on that machine. And they come to you like this. And uh, see here, this one here, it says 380, 320 grit right there. Okay? And that's what you want to put in your, in your thing here. Double A abrasives.com. Okay. Sand O Flex 320 grit. All right. Now these things will come, and uh, even though it's three, 320 grit, uh, it's still pretty abrasive. So, what I do when I get them. I'll get me a piece of uh, scrap wood and I'll turn the wheel on and I'll run 
it through there until I get almost all the grit where it's smooth. You know, I can feel how it's rougher down here, and up here it's not rough at all, and it's all feathered out. Okay, because you don't want to, you don't want it to be so aggressive. It's going to, you know, rip this thing out of your hand, and also take off all the chip chips. The only one thing I want is I want to take off the very sharp edge of that chip, but I want to leave the chip there exposed. That's just my style. Okay? So you just turn the thing on get a good hold of your piece because it'll take it out of your hand. See there? That's actually a little too much. When you get a sh real sharp edge or something, it'll it'll take off more than it will on the smoother side. This is what you want right here. Doesn't that look good? Look, just looks looks great. And you'll notice another thing. This is a side I haven't done. Have I? No, <laughs> looks like I have done. But anyway, see these upper ridges where it's dirty right there? This Sandiflex wheel will take that off. Yeah, he's clean dried up. People say they wash their carvings in soap and water. I would never do that because you ne once you uh, you know put that soap and water on your piece, it's going to immediately soak down into the wood, and you're never going to get it out of there. And it probably have an effect on your paint job. So I just don't do that. I keep my hands clean. I keep my gloves clean, and my carving area as clean as I can. So when I get down to this stage. This Sandiflex wheel is going to clean it up as much as it needs to be cleaned up to be painted. Okay? Alright, let me get that uh, head and I'll show you about it. Now with the head, especially the face, well, we're just especially the whole thing, okay? You just have to be careful. Little outcroppings like this, if you don't go at it the correct way, it's going to take that piece off. So you have to do it in such a way that that's not going to happen. So to prevent things like this from, you know, grabbing it here and knocking off this back corner, what I do is I put my thumb there because it's not going to hurt you. It a little bit, it ain't going to hurt you. So actually clean your hands for you. But one of the critical spots is right there on the tip of that nose. I always keep that covered when I get up close to that area there. Okay? So here I'm going to sand off this side of the head here and we'll see down here these little jagged things it'll take those off too so if you stand with the grain, it's not going to happen. But if you try to come up with it like that, it will happen. So I just put my hand back there. And 
as a last step, you know, after everything on the face has been sanded, then I will sand my nose. Real quickly, because I don't want it to get sanded too much. See the difference just in the color alone. How nice and clean this is over here. Okay, just be careful. This is a great tool, uh, you know, for cleaning up your carvings, for making them look really nice, smooth, and polished, yet still show each individual chip. But if you hold it on there too long, it will take that chip away immediately. All right, 320 grit is what you want. Anything less than that increases the size of the little grits and it really will take it off and you don't want that okay all right so here he is now you could stop right now and you'd have your terrific bust you know without the glasses but uh, he's ready to paint and varnish need to varnish the stand but uh, we've reached one point here. Now we're going to take it just a little bit farther, okay, by putting those glasses on him. But in the next video, we're going to start painting him, all right? So until then, I'll talk to you later.